Hi, I'm Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Dark Eyed Junko Go Out and Sketch instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch a dark eyed Junko by applying what you learned in the step by step lesson. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Head out to a park, zoo, aviary, your yard, or you can sketch from an HD video at home. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a dark eyed Junko for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, observe and paint. Don't let yourself get too caught up with accuracy. Just relax and have fun. First, use a pencil to lightly draw the basic shape of the animal on the page. You'll want to also kind of figure out where you want the animal to be and in what position before you get started. This might mean you'll watch the animal for a little while before you even start drawing. You can draw a circle for the head. Start drawing another kind of oval for the body and some lines for the tail, more of a rectangle and a couple of feet just to get an idea of where that bird's going to be. And so if anything's too big or too small, you can start adjusting it. But we work within these parameters to make sure it's not going to be bigger than the page. Then I can start adding in, let's see, this part. Start going from the nape up to the top of the head. And you can use your final reference image to help you as well. This is gonna, this is just a little too big. So I'm gonna make it a little smaller and I'll erase this. I don't want to do, spend too much time erasing. But it's okay to do a little bit. So again, just adding in this basic shape. You can erase a little bit, or you can leave those marks. It's a style judgment. So you're just mapping in the larger prominent parts first. So the different levels of feathers here, not the individual feathers. And then the tail, not the individual feathers of the tail, just starting to get more the length correct and the tip there and the positioning. The animal is constantly moving, so you're not going to get it exact. So just have to be happy with a little bit of a sketch. And just kind of think of everything as a shape or a line or a group to help you really get all that in there. And it has an ugly stage, so it's sort of really weird and really ugly, kind of wonky. And the more you add some light lines to this and work on it a little bit, not too much, you're going to start getting it all to come together. I'm going to redraw this head a bit too because it's not really fitting. Again, you can erase, just don't get too carried away with it by adding a bunch of details. On the feet. I'm just going to draw lines for where each of the toes go. I'm not going to worry about the details quite yet. This is a moving animal. I'm 
<laughs> breast is a little bit bigger there. The animal keeps moving, so it changes a little bit. And maybe I'll leave those lines. As long as you don't get confused by your lines, you can leave them. So the head has its own set of shapes here, so I've drawn lines to kind of help guide myself and then readjusted the outside one more time because so I think that that looks a little bit more like the bird's head and maybe I was right the first time keeping it kind of large. And I can't really see the bird's eye a lot so I'm just basing that off of my picture and some of the beak is hard to see as well so I'm basing that off of my reference image as well. It's just a sketch so it's okay. It doesn't need to be quite right. Just a little too long. And I'm getting just paying attention to details too much. You can kind of sit back and look at it and think, does that look similar or does it have something that's a little off? Uh, then you can start adding a few more details. I still think this is a little, the head shape is a little off. A little bit. Okay. I might just leave it. Maybe the eye needs to be a little closer. Adjust the eye a bit. Maybe not. Well, it's just a matter of just working with it. If it looks a little weird, just redo it. That's a little bit more where it belongs. Maybe that's where it was before. <laughs> now you can add in a few details like the feathers. And this is where you may want to use your reference. I'm not going to get real carried away, just some, a few lines here and there. Because when you're out, you might not have a lot of time to look at the bird. And 
since I'm doing this from a video, I'm having a little bit more time than I would in most cases. If you have a feeder, like a window feeder, maybe you can see the bird. For a little bit longer, close up, or maybe you're sitting in an aviary and the bird is just hanging out. Although if you're in a yard, the bird's probably not going to sit there very long. Take everything little steps by little steps and don't get too worried about getting it perfect. And it'll all come together. It's just a sketch, so just enjoying having some time observing nature. Add a few details to the feet. Not too many, since if you're out sketching, this will be kind of difficult to get a lot of the details. But again, you can base this off of what you know from your final reference image. For the basic shape and the nail shape. I like the way this looks overall, so I'm going to add the common name and the scientific name. And then I'm going to add some paint. I have all my paint pre-mixed based on the step-by-step -step combinations. It just saves a little bit of time.
And I'm going to start with the same color as I did with the step-by-step. -step. So I'm just gonna use that really light chunk of yellow on the beak. Test it on my paper and dab it off on my towel before applying it. And then I'm going to take the Junko Brown, the really wet light version of it, testing it out on my paper, making sure to dab the extra paint and water onto my towel before applying it. I'm picking up a little bit more and dabbing it on my towel. And then I'm going to apply it to most of the feathers here upper part of the bird. I'm just going to add it to the whole space. I'm not going to worry too much about the lighter areas this time. Leaving the very tips there white. I'm even going to move a little bit of this into the head. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of the pink. Again, dabbing it on to my towel and testing it on my test strip. Looks good. I think I still have enough. I don't need to get more. I'm going to add that. A little too wet, so I dabbed it on my towel. Add that to the feet. Again, the feet are pretty rough. And that's okay. I can redefine them with my pen at the end. Then I'll take a little bit of the black, dab it on my towel, test it on my test strip, make sure it's light enough. I think I want a little bit lighter. I'll start pretty light, not too light. And I'm going to paint it the same way I painted it before, making sure this is dry first, pretty dry. So I'm just going to add this black color throughout the head, down by the breast, and then for the whole head here by the beak. Kind of pulling these, this watercolor to the edge. Then I'll pick up some of the darker color and I'll add it in to help with the shading. And I'm kind of referring to my image from the step by step, my final reference image here a little bit. just a little bit more this dark color in here along the edges a little bit on the edges there as well I'm gonna let that dry. And there's a little bit of gray on the belly. It's mostly right under, on this bird, it's a little bit right under the wing here. So I'm gonna add that in. Don't really have to worry about a gradient. It looks like it's pretty solid in color. In fact, I'm gonna add just a little bit of darker color in there too because that's the way it is on the video. I'm going to add that while that's still wet. Then I'm going to take a little bit of the Junko yellow to add to these nails. Give it a little bit of color. The, this Junko's nails are a bit darker and then going to take a little bit of the gray color 
and add it to the body. And you can see some of the brown showing through. This particular junko is pretty gray, but I'm going to add, quickly add this in. And I'm just referring to the junko and my final reference image for placement. I'm not being too worried about where that paint goes. It's gonna look a bit ugly and messy and that's fine. I'm bring it all together with the micron pens at the end. And you can see that the top or middle part of these feathers has a bit more gray in most of them. So the ones that I've drawn in, they don't have to be exact, of course. I'm just kind of adding a line of gray. And you can make observations about how exact everything is on the side here, if you like. Add the darker Junko Pink to add some definition to the feet and the legs. Just quickly getting it on there, not worrying too much about placement or getting it exact. This is just a sketch. Doing simple observations, getting an idea of this animal more than anything else. This chunk of nails are pretty dark, so I'm going to take some of the chunk of brown, just kind of add that in, making sure I have a nice tip with my brush. messy on the feet there. I'm going to go through and add just a little bit more throughout. So add a little more junk of brown to the body. This is as dry. Just to add some highlights around some of these feathers. And it could be real messy like this. It doesn't have to be exact. And there's a bit of sh light hitting the head and you can see some of this brown, so I'm gonna add a little more brown there. This will really make everything pop. I'm just roughly adding it in. So you have some light colors, some dark colors. Real messy. And I'm kind of seeing a little bit on the body as well, so I'm going to get just that really, really wet. Dabbing it off to get the water off on my towel and putting it onto this part of the bird. And I feel like the tail is a little short. Maybe just my positioning when I was looking at it, so I'm just going to make it a little bit longer by adding a tiny bit of paint real quick. You can draw it in first and then add the paint. See, it's pretty messy. Bring it all together with those micron pens and add an eye. I didn't draw it in first. It might have been a better idea. There's a little bit of an eye. And I can fix this with my micron pens as well. Add a little bit more black over everything. Now this is dried. Starting with that eye. So I'm just using where the paint landed here to determine where I'm adding paint on the outside. Kind of bringing it, slowly bringing it in towards 
that central part of the eye. And you can barely see that in the video, but use the final reference image for that a bit. And there isn't much white space, so get pretty close. Bring that black around. I dabbed a little bit too concentrated, so I dabbed it on my towel. Just kind of pulling that heavy concentrated dark color throughout to the end of the head, kind of like it is in the video. So most of the dark parts are here and then the light shining over here showing some brown. And I like that kind of textured look here. This Junko has a pretty dark coloration in general. So I'm going to bring a lot of that into the body, but not too much. Up here on the mantle, it's a little bit darker than my reference image. Then I'm going to add just a little bit more to the beak. Just a little color there. And it's a bit messy and probably not the correct size for everything, but it's a sketch so it's okay. I'm going to leave it where it's at, let it dry, and add some ink lines. So use the 005 Micron. My head is of this bird is a little bit wet still. So I can work on everything else until that dries if I want. It's important to be able to work quickly while you're field sketching or sketching from a live animal if possible. So, starting in the dry spots and then waiting to work into the wet areas might be a good technique to apply. So, I'm going to use the O5 micron to just kind of redefine some lines of this bird. Redrawing over everything, but also redefining if needed. Again, this is not the exact number of feathers or exact placement. You're going to just get a rough idea of this bird as it moves around, you're drawing it. It's important to trust what you drew quite a bit and just go with it. And even though things look a little weird, my eye still feels a little strange to me. I think it's because it's not quite close enough. So I'm just going to move it just a little bit more over here. And the reference doesn't really have I think it needs to be closer to the beak, so I just moved a little bit by drawing it in a little bit closer and removing some of that white area. And it's okay not to have the reflection. I can always paint in a little bit of white, put some white paint, maybe some acrylic or gouache on top. That's a trick 
if you ever have that with you. mistakes like I put this this back toe was just a little bit too long I try to readjust it by turning this part into the nail now that I'm done with the 005 pen I'm going to move on to the 01 so the 01 micron pen I'm gonna use that to write in the scientific name again just so Thicken it up a bit. And just add a few darker lines here and there. If you forgot some lighter lines, you can add some more in with a very light pressure if you need to with this pen. Lastly, I'm just going to add a few darker lines with the weight black micron. Again, not being exact, just kind of adding them in. I'm going to go back to the 01 micron and just add bit of white tip on the end of these tail feathers too. Then jumping back to the 08 micron and finishing it by drawing in the common name. I'm going to define the head just a little bit more. Again, I don't want to work this too much. And I like where that's at. So after you add those ink lines and you think you have enough paint and it looks the way you like it to look, you can add some identification on the outside, talking about the animal, the sizing, maybe what it was doing, maybe the way the weather was today. I have a rainy day. Maybe your mood, anything you like. This is your sketchbook. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and check out naturesketchcrate.com for future lessons.